Hello, uh, my name is Louise Hamilton. Um, I work in the Clinic Valence. I've been working here since seven years. Um, and we um, have a lot of MS patients that come here, so we're very used to working with them. Today I want to talk about the role of occupational therapy in MS. Um, as an OT, um, a little bit of our theory. OTs recognise that the individual needs to maintain and fulfil their roles in their everyday life and they need to be productive and they want to have a sense of worth. For me as a therapist, I think it's important to find out who the patient is, find out what their life roles are, their routines, what they do at home, what they have for a social life, etc. If they're a mother, a um, grandmother, a wife, etc. Um, often we find that their daily demands, everything what's, what they have to do in their daily life, conflicts with their MS. As we know, MS is a progressive disease, so it's, it's, it can be that um, after a few years they're not as able to um, carry out their roles. Um, maybe they have fatigue and they have to change their daily routines in order to cope with this fatigue. That's a, a big topic that we talk about in occupational therapy. Resource management is another one, and that's things like um, introducing online shopping, um, trying to get them to change their, their daily habits, for example, buying frozen food rather than preparing from fresh as it's quicker and it, take, it uses less energy. Um, we have to maintain their motor function, maintain their independence and quality of life, we help them in their workplace, for example, computer adaptions, um, maybe discussing when they have to take breaks so that they don't work too much and then they have fatigue problems. And we look at helping aids, adaptations and strategies to help them remain independent in their life. It's just a bit of a repetition. We use the Canadian Occupational Performance Model in order to see what is important for the patient and see how, how they perform the tasks and how happy they are within, within these tasks. Today I have a case report. This patient's called Joanna. I want to try and demonstrate how OT, with the use of simple devices, helping strategies, um, can enhance independence and improve performance of daily living activities. Um, Joanna has MS since her first diagnosis was in 1993. She has an EDSS of 8, which means she's bound to her wheelchair, but can still retain some sort of independence with self-care. Clinical picture, she has an ataxic tetraparesis. She has fine motor and coordination deficits, and she has a cere cerebellar tremor. Her social background, she's married, she has three grown-up kids. Um, her apartment is uh, wheelchair accessible with a lift. Her assistive aids is a wheelchair and for outside she has a Swiss tract. She has assistance at home as in a full-time live-in carer. And her hobbies used to be getting out and about with friends, knitting, um, latest while it's more on the computer, um, reading and she still likes to bake. Um, in OT as well as in physio we always look at the patient's resources so what can they do? Um, she can independently drive her wheelchair. She has a supportive family and network. She can live independently with her private help. Um, she's still cognitively fit, so she's able to learn, and she's also able to um, know where her limits are. She's realistic. Small household tasks are also possible, so she hasn't completely given up her role as mother and um, wife. Um, her rehab goals by, by us in the OT were to perform some of her hobbies. The main one she said was baking bread. She used to do every Sunday morning for her whole family, bake a big bread. Um, knitting was also a, um, a goal. We looked at this two years in a row and because of her attacks, um, movements, it wasn't possible. She also wants to improve her, in, her ability to work on the computer and also wants to be able to make breakfast, butter her bread herself. Her problem areas are her trunk. She's very weak and unstable when sitting freely. Her left arm she uses more as a stabilizing arm and her right arm is more the working arm to wash her face and to eat. Um, our main focus in the, in the OT was to improve her goal-directed movements and to introduce her to helping aids, adaptations to improve her skill in these um, areas. It's a picture of Joanna. 
We see here she's got quite a lot of helping aids. The first one she has is an elastic bandage around her arm in order to improve the tactile stimulation in the arm, um, in order to hopefully give more stability and support to the muscles and help with the um, movement. Joanna said herself that she felt the movement was slightly more stable and slightly less tactish. Um, she also has a non-slip, um, just because of her ataxic movements, that does, everything doesn't slip away. She has a breakfast board, looks like this. The nails are for the bread, so that it stays put. One hole is for the jam, and the other for the butter. You will see a video of um, her trying to do this, she's much difficulty. The idea is that with one hand, or just because it's more stable, she can work with both hands in order to open these. She has a knife with a thick grip, grip, which she can then use to butter the bread. The bread doesn't move. She also has these scissors, which independently open. She just has to have some grip function. Um, also, she can hold this still with her arm and with the good hand she can cut it open. I'm going to show you the video of Joanna performing this. So, in this video you can just see the difficulties that Joanna has, even with all these um, assistive devices. Uh, she still has difficulty because of her ataxia. She gets there, but she takes, I think, 10 minutes in order to completely finish her breakfast bread. Um, this was something that she realized at home. She lets her carer do almost everything for her. And in the clinic, she realized it was important to get her role back and to remain a little bit independent. You can see as soon as the arm comes away from the table, she has um, um, quite bad ataxia. This knife with a thick grip is just easier for her, for her to hold. Um, our treatment plan to Im improve her goal-directed movement skills um, in the Clinic Valence, we use the Armeo, which is a robot-assisted arm trainer. We use practical activities, for example, in paying at the cash till, working on the computer, um, use practical tips and ad adaptations. We use helping aids such as bottle cap opener. It's easier to open. She doesn't need much strength. Um, also, we use practical activities, for example, in paying at the cash till, working on the computer, um, use practical tips and ad adaptations. We use helping aids such as bottle cap opener, it's easier to open. She doesn't need much strength. Um, also, uh, tips, for example, holding the bottle between her legs whenever her arms are too um, ataxic. Um, we use Fine Motor Skills Training Group um, and we brought in energy saving tips in order to reduce the effort that's needed. We have another video example here. This video shows um, difficulties encountered when she doesn't have enough um, sufficient support of her upper body. Um, with this video example, I want to talk about the battle against ataxia or the everyday tips and tricks. Um, mainly is positioning. You need a stable chair, you need backrest, armrest, feet need to be in contact with the floor with a broad base of support. The upper body needs to be supported with cushions, the trunk needs to be supported or leaning on the table. The arm should be supported at the correct height in order to give as much support as necessary and you need a symmetric position and shoulders and pelvis should be in sync with each other. 
Here's a photo of a simple environmental adaptation that we use with Joanna. When she was working on her computer, she always leaned forwards, and then again, she had um, a taxi in her upper body. We made sure she used both arms for support, and we put a cushion behind her in order to improve, um, to increase her support. Um, and on the mouse, we used um, therapy band, so it, it would stay in one place. So she was able to move it a little bit, but still it didn't shoot away with her, with her big um, ataxic movements. Supporting movement. Objects should be stable, should have non-slip grips, should have adapted grips. For example, her, her knife was non-slip and had a thick grip. She needs to work within the center of gravity or always body near. Her elbows and forearms, sometimes she has to really stick them to her body in order to get, get more support. She should use slow, short and controlled movements and she should sequence her movements. This means when she goes to get a glass, this is the first movement, second movement is gripping, third movement is bringing it to her mouth. If she does it too quick, the, the ataxia um, is, is stronger and it's more difficult. When she's drinking, she uses a straw from a bottle because really a glass she has no hope, her, her movements are so strong. Different tricks, for example, opening bottles, she needs to stabilize between her legs, use a non-slip mat or use different helping devices. Here's a few photos of um, helping aids and adaptions often helpful with MS patients. Joanne has some of these at home um, and uses them to remain as independent as possible. This is a Swiss track which I was talking about earlier. She um, uses this when she's outside of the house. She doesn't have the, the strength or the endurance to um, go long distances. This is another kitchen help and again it, it holds all different um, utensils and jars, all different sizes that she's um, able to open them easier. It's different computer adaptations. This is one, this lady had MS and her arms were too weak. She wasn't able to type. With this support, she was able, her arm was able to be held steady and then she could use her fingers to type. It's also movable, so she was able to nicely um, work the keyboard. Um, some different washing and dressing aids. We have a um, bath board. You can see the photo here. This one's an electric one, but there's also very simple ones when people are no longer so mo mobile that they can go in and out of the bath. There's also a um, toilet raised seat in case they have difficulties coming from a low position into standing. Non-slip grips, there's hair washer with an extended handle and there's the hairbrush with the long handle um, if she has difficulties moving her shoulders, the upper body. There's also special nail clippers for fine motor problems. They're just very big and you can use a much grober um, movement in order to cut your nails. Here's a, an example of the bath board. Dressing aids, um, we have an aid for dressing trousers, that's when people aren't able to bend or their, their balance is um, difficult, then they can use this in order to pull the trousers up. Um, we have button opener, a thing to help take your boots off, your shoes off when you're unable to pull them yourself. Long shoehorn. And then there's um, spiral elastic laces in case you can't tie your shoes and you just pull these and they remain, they remain uh, closed. Aids to assist at meal times, then the cutlery as we've seen with the built up non-slip handles. There's bendable cutlery in order to have the right angle to your mouth. There's a rocker knife which requires that movement instead of more like a saw movement. Um, there's a straw holder plate guard which is here this is when people have difficulty with one hand everything moves away from them when they use that the the food doesn't fall away and we have an energy saving design you can use the bigger muscle groups um, to cut the vegetables The last one is then aids to help in the kitchen. Um, there's a peeler with thicker handles, a bottle opener as we've seen earlier, the knife as I already showed, and there's different electrical uh, aids to help open cans. 
here's a picture of a few of the devices. You can also get custom vid cutlery, which really suits the angle for the patient. And that's my presentation. Thank you for listening and have a nice day. Your next presentation is the Psychosomatic Medicine and Social Factors by Ferena Kesselring. Um, enjoy.